The first property of Z transforms that we will consider is the Z transform of a sequence that has been multiplied by the sequence a to the power of n. Now this is the geometric sequence that we saw in previous videos. So f sub n is an arbitrary sequence. Now the Z transform of it can be written as big F of Z. So the Z transform of little f sub n, our sequence, is big F of Z. So it's some function of Z. Now we will multiply our sequence f sub n by the geometric sequence a to the power of n. To form this new sequence we will call v sub n. So let's look at the terms of v sub n. So we know that n begins with 0, so the first term is v sub 0, then the second term is v sub 1, v sub 2, etc. Um, Okay, so we plug in successive values of n starting with 0, so we get a to the 0, f sub 0, well that's just f sub 0. Then we have a to the 1, f sub 1, a to the 2, f sub 2, and so on. Now let's consider the z transform of v sub n. So what do we have to do to get the z transform of a sequence? Well, we saw in previous videos that we need to take an infinite sum of each term of the sequence, v sub n, by z to the power of minus n and we are summing from n equals 0 to infinity. So this is the z transform of v sub n. We can also write this as capital V of z. Okay so some of the terms have been printed out here. When n is 0 we get v sub 0 z to the 0. Well that's just v sub 0. When n is 1 we get v sub 1 z to the minus 1. n equals 2 gives us v sub 2 z to the minus 2 and so on. Now we can go up here and um, write in v explicitly as a as this uh, product sequence of the um, geometric sequence and our arbitrary sequence f sub n. Okay so v0 is just f sub 0. v1 is a f sub 1 and so on. Next we have the summa summation notation for this sequence. So we can check that this makes sense. If n is 0 we get a to the 0 which is 1, f sub 0, z to the 0 which is also 1. So we end up getting just f sub 0 for the first term. When n is 1 we get a to the 1 which is a, f sub 1 times z to the minus 1. So we can see that this checks out. Now we can uh, take this constant a in under this power minus n. So we need to change the power of a from n to minus n. So how do we do that? Well, we can write a to the power of n as 1 over a to the power of minus n. Okay. So this is what we will get. And uh, that minus n power, of course, can be taken outside this quotient. But if you look carefully at this thing here, you will see that it is none other than the definition of the Z transform. Um, well, the Z transform of F sub N with Z replaced by Z over A. Okay, so down here we have the Z transform of the sequence F sub N. We take each term of the sequence and multiply it by Z to the minus N and sum from zero to infinity. So the Z transform of F sub N uh, can be written as big F of Z. And of course it can be also written as like this, the Z transform of our sequence F sub N. But using the notation big F of Z, we can write down what this is. We just replace Z with Z over A. So we get this property for the multiplication of an arbitrary sequence f sub n by the geometric sequence a to the power of n. Let's take this example here. Suppose we want a z transform of e to the power of minus alpha n by cos omega n. So we compare to this here, we see that we're, we are multiplying this sequence, this is our f sub n, by this sequence here, which is a geometric sequence. It's got the form a to the power of n. Now what is a for this sequence? Well a is actually e to the power of minus alpha. e to the power of minus alpha times n is the same as e to the power of minus alpha to the power of n. So the constant a is e to the minus alpha. So what do we need to do? Well we have to get big F of z. How do we get big F of z? 
Well, that's the Z transform of um, F sub n. Okay, the Z transform of cos omega n. And this is something that we saw in a previous video. We got the Z transform of the sequence cos omega n. You see, we have to get big F of Z before we can get big F of Z over A. Okay, so you just look this up, and now we can write down the answer. So we know by this property that the answer is F of Z divided by A, where A is E to the minus alpha. So here is f of z, so we need to replace z with z over e to the minus alpha. So z squared will be replaced with um, this thing squared. So that's going to give you z squared over e to the minus 2 alpha. Actually, I could have made life slightly easier for myself. Um, z divided by e to the minus alpha is the same as z multiplied by e to the alpha. So we could just replace z by z times e to the power of alpha. But anyway, you can see that if you multiply above and below by uh, e to the minus 2 alpha, you will simplify things a bit. So multiply on top by that. Do the same underneath. So we will get an e to the minus alpha times this term here, and we'll have an e to the minus alpha times this term down here. Next, we will consider the z transform of a sequence that is multiplied by this sequence here, n. So what is n? Well, we just define it for non-negative values. So when n is 0, well, the sequence is n, it's 0. When n is 1, the second term is 1, when n is 2, the second term is 2, and so on. Um, the sequence n is also known as the unit ramp sequence, because to get a value of the sequence, we just add 1 onto the previous value of the sequence. So we ramp up each term of the sequence by 1 to get the next term. Before we multiply the ramp sequence by an arbitrary sequence, we will consider the z-transform of the ramp sequence. We could use capital R to represent this sequence, to, to represent this transform. We know that it's a function of z. So again, um, we apply the definition of the z-transform. We take each term of the sequence and multiply by z to the minus n and sum from 0 to infinity. So what's the first term? Well, the first term of this sequence is 0, and we multiply by z to the 0. Well, that's just 1. Well, it won't matter here, of course. We get 0. Um, okay, the next term is y sub 1, which is 1 in our case. Okay, which we multiply by z to the minus 1. The next term is 2, which we multiply by z to the minus 2. When n is 3, r sub 3 is 3. When n is 4, r sub 4 is 4, and so on. Now the first thing that we should notice is that this is not a geometric series, okay? Um, you know, to get, we, we cannot multiply, say, this term here by a common ratio to get the next term, and so on. It won't work. Um, the coefficients 1, 2, 3, and 4 follow an arithmetic sequence. Um, the powers of z follow a geometric sequence, but unfortunately the series itself is not geometric. However, something useful happens if we factorize z to the power of minus 1 out of this series. Okay, this is what we get here. Now what's very convenient actually is everything inside the brackets here. Now again, this thing is not a geometric series, but it can be shown that it's 1 minus z to the power of minus 1 to the power of minus 2. Let's just uh, see that, actually. 
we apply the binomial theorem to 1 minus z to the power of minus 1 to the power of minus 2. So the power is minus 2. So the first term is minus 2c0 times this quantity here to the power of 0. Well, we also have 1 uh, times 1 um, to the power of minus 2, but you know, powers of 1 are just 1, so we don't have to worry about them. So we only have to raise z to the minus, uh, minus z to the minus 1 by successive powers. Well, minus 2c0 is just 1, and this is 1, so we just get 1. Next, we have minus 2c1. Well, that's just minus 2, and it's multiplied by minus z to the minus 1. So that's going to give us the plus 2z to the minus 1. What about minus 2c2? Well, the denominator is going to be 2 by 1, 2 factorial, and we have minus 2 by minus 3 on top. So we have uh, minus 1 by minus 3. That's plus 3. And plus 3 is multiplied by minus z to the minus 1 squared, okay? So that's um, z to the minus 2. So we get plus 3z to the minus 2. I'll just show one more term. The next term is minus 2c3 times minus z to the minus 1 to the power of 3. Let's look at minus 2c3. So in the denominator we're going to have 3 factorial because it's minus 2c3. And on top we have minus 2 by minus 3 by minus 4. Um, so notice here that we will get minus 4. But notice that this term will be negative because we're raising a negative term t to an odd power. So we're going to get negative z to the minus 3 and that's multiplied by minus 4 so that's going to give us plus 4 z to the minus 3. Now we can write this as uh, 1 over z times 1 over um, 1 minus z to the minus 1 squared. We can multiply above and below by z squared to um, um, tidy this up a bit, make it look tidier. So we multiply on top by z squared. I'm sorry, we will multiply above and below by z. z times 1 is z. And we have a z squared here. But we can take the z squared into this bracket because the powers of these two terms are the same. Okay, so these two terms have the common power 2. So if we multiply the z in here, we will get z minus 1. So now we found the z-transform of the ramp function. Now let's look at the z-transform of the ramp sequence times an arbitrary sequence f sub n. Okay, we start by considering the z-transform of our arbitrary sequence f sub n. We can also write this as... Um, big F of Z. So what do we do again? Well, what do we do is we take each term of the sequence starting with F sub 0 and multiply it by um, powers of Z to the minus N. So we have Z to the minus 0 which is um, just 1. Then we have F sub 1 times Z to the minus 1. Then we have f sub 2 times z to the minus 2, and so on. Okay, so we just have this infinite series. We're summing the terms of the sequence f sub n times z to the minus n. Now let's consider the derivative of f of z with respect to z. Well, if we differentiate this, we get 0. That's just a constant. Um, differentiating z to the minus 1 will give us minus z to the minus 2, so we will get minus f sub 1 z to the minus 2. Over here we will have uh, minus 2 f sub 2 z to the minus 3. For the next term, which isn't written down, we will get minus 3 f sub 3 z to the minus 4. Now, next we will factorize minus z to the minus 1 out of this series. Um, notice that we get a pattern here between the subscripts of the f sequence and the powers. So let's let's use the sigma notation to rewrite this infinite series. I'll put a 1 in here so we can see the pattern. So we have 1 here, we have 2, then we have a 3. So we have to have n here to capture those that um, RAM sequence. So you can see the RAM sequence is coming into this now. Um, so, 
what else do we have? Okay, I'll just remove that one. Okay, well, we have n here. We have f sub n. See, when n is 1, we get 1 times f sub 1. When n is 2, we get 2 times f sub 2. And next we have z to the minus n. Now, this looks very like the definition of the z transform, um, where we're getting the z transform of this thing here. However, notice one little problem. The z transform involves summing from n equals 0 to infinity. So, what will happen if we change this this 1 to a 0? Well, actually, nothing will happen. Because if we put 0 in, we'll for n, we'll have 0 times that. We just have 0. So, it's like adding uh, 0 in here. So, it's okay for us to sum to 0. Su sum from 0. And now we have nothing other than the definition of the z transform of n times f of n. n times f sub n. So we multiply the term, the sequence by z to the minus n and sum from 0 to infinity. So now we found the z transform of the product of the ramp sequence and an arbitrary sequence f sub n. So um, you just multiply both sides here by minus z. So we've minus z times the derivative of f with respect to z, where big F of z is the z transform of the sequence little f sub n. Now let's look at an example of that property. We are going to get the z transform of the causal sequence n squared. Causal just means that n begins at zero, so we are dealing with non-negative values of n. That is n equals 0, 1, 2, and 3, and so on. So here is the result that we will use. And we're, we are interested in z of n squared. Now how do we get n squared using this result? Well, we just replace f sub n with n. So we get n times n, which is n squared. So f sub n is the ramp sequence, which we also refer to as r sub n, as we saw earlier and um, we want its transform, which is big R of Z. So to make the notation consistent, we need big R here. Okay, so here we have uh, the Z transform of the ramp function that we uh, derived earlier. And we need to differ differentiate it. So it's a quotient of functions. So we take the denominator, z minus 1 squared, multiply by the derivative of the numerator, which is 1, minus the numerator, which is z, times the derivative of the denominator. If we differentiate z minus 1 squared, we get 2 times z minus 1 to the power of 1. Well, times the derivative of what's inside, which is 1. And uh, we divide that by the denominator squared. z minus 1 squared squared is z minus 1 to the power of 4. Okay, I've expanded out z minus 1 squared here, and I've simplified the numerator a bit. I'll take minus 1 out of this numerator. Um, a slip here, we should have a plus 2z here. Okay, so on top we get minus z squared plus 1. Um, I'll just take out the minus sign. So we have z squared minus 1 on top, and we can factorize z squared minus 1. z squared minus 1 is z minus 1 times z plus 1. Okay, that was the difference of two squares. We have a z minus 1 on top, and uh, we can cancel one of the z minus 1s underneath. So underneath we will end up at z minus 1 to the power of 3. Okay, so that's the z transform of n squared. Now you can imagine co continuing on in a similar way to get the z transform of n cubed. Write n cubed as the product of the ramp function, our sequence n, with the sequence n squared. So n squared now is our f sub n. So we have the z transform of n times f sub n. So we know what we have to do. We have to multiply minus z times the derivative of... Um, the z transform of f sub n, 
which in this case is the z transform of n squared with respect to z. So we would have to uh, differentiate this quantity here and multiply by minus z. 